I'm going to give you a single sentence that has changed the way I have thought about international lifestyle, five flags, and things like that. And then I will explain it. And this just hit me literally just a little while ago as I was thinking through this stuff. You don't marry where you live. You date where you live. Let me explain that. This, this, this opens up so many mental pathways for me. It's interesting. Maybe it'll do the same for you. A little while back, I did a YouTube video on why you don't want to own property or own assets in your country, A, the country where you live. And the primary argument I use that video, and I'm correct about this, is that two things. Number one, it can be seized by the government if there's any problems down the road with you or the government or you and the government together. <clears throat> Number two, there are more laws and taxes and other things that you'll be susceptible, susceptible, susceptible to when you own property, assets, things like that in your home country, particularly things like taxes. These are the two arguments that I used. And one person that comments, so you guys are very smart, said, actually, instead of saying that, Caleb, because most people, and he's right, are not going to believe that their government would ever confiscate their property. Why would any government ever do that? And many people in the comments actually said, well, why would a government ever do this? I'm not a criminal. Right. <laughs> you have to be a criminal to have your, gut, your stuff confiscated. Yes. Ask many Russians right now who live outside of Russia. What happened to them? They did nothing wrong. They had their stuff confiscated. Assets froze. Right. Okay. So what he said was a better reason <clears throat> is that if you own your home, let's say, in where you, you move to another country and you buy a house or you buy a condo, you own it rather than rent it. You are more likely to stay there and to stick it out if and when that country starts getting worse. You're more likely to put up with the abuse that country is going to feed upon you because you own your house instead of just renting. Perfect. Exactly. Fantastic point. And I realized when I read that comment and thought about it for a few minutes, that is one of the subconscious reasons why I have not and probably will not purchase any real estate in Dubai where I live. Right now I'm in Guadalajara, Mexico. Because I didn't want to be, quote, married to Dubai. I love Dubai. I think Dubai is fantastic. Zero taxes, zero crime, zero wokeism, amazing infrastructure, amazing schools, booming economy. Dubai is a fantastic place, at least for me. But I have said many times, and I've never changed my mind about this, and I won't, if down the road Dubai starts getting bad, I don't see that happening anytime soon or even ever, but if it could happen, this is what Five Flags is all about, protecting yourself long term. If that ever happens, I'm getting the fuck out of there. I'm not going to sit there and say, this is my home, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm getting the fuck out. And if I own a bunch of real estate there, that decision would be much more difficult. Right? So, <clears throat> for example, history doesn't talk about this very much. But there were many Jews in the early to mid 1930s in Germany who left Germany and got the fuck out and were fine. Now, there weren't very many because most of the Jews of the 1930s said many things that many of you, maybe not you literally, but things I've heard many times on my content, other places on the internet. Well, I'm not, I'm not leaving. This is my home, damn it. This is my country. I'm going to stand and fight. Or, hey, family first. What about my little brother? My little brother lives here. Fuck you. And they stayed, and guess what happened? Same thing with Zimbabwe. A lot of white people left Zimbabwe right before it started getting very bad for white people in that country because they saw the writing on the wall. They didn't say, well, I'm just going to stay. I'm gonna, this is my home. This is my farm. You know, I bought this house, and I bought this farm. My grandpa bought this house, and blah, blah, blah. Or I own this house here in this country that's starting to have problems, and I have $120,000 equity in this house, so I can't leave this house, even though the country's going downhill and I'm having all kinds of problems. You would be less likely to leave if you had those kinds of assets and those kinds of ties in that country. And I would love to see studies. I haven't seen any, but maybe they're out there. If you have them, let me know, or you know of them. Send me a link. That show when people leave a country before it gets really bad, the percentage of those people who owned property versus the percentage of people who rented. I'd be really curious to see that. The example I've used before in the past. This is a real life example back in 1981, where I used to live in the Portland, Oregon area. We had Mount St. Helens. Volcano that exploded in 1981. And right before, and we, we knew it was going to explode before it did. And people went to people's homes on the mountain or around the mountain that were going to be destroyed. And they said, hey, this volcano is going to explode tomorrow. We need to evacuate. And most people evacuated. But a lot of people said, fuck you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. 
This is my cabin. And these people got killed. Now, again, let's say they were just renting and they had real estate, but they had real estate in other places that were far away. I think they'd be more likely to go, all right, fuck, let's go. Um, I'm going to use a parallel here from my other content, Alpha Male 2.0. I have a lot of experience with this over my other content. I'm going to use a, most of you are men, so I'm going to use a dating example, okay? Let's say you are dating a woman who you really like. She's very pretty. She's smart. She's fun. You guys get along, low drama. You know, you, you love spending time with her. You love sex, all that stuff. It's all great. You don't live with her. She's your girlfriend. You like her a lot. Maybe even love her, okay? You don't live with her. It is a lot easier. I'm not saying it's easy, but it is a lot easier to, let's say down the road, she turns into a total bitch. If that happens, it's a lot easier for you to end that relationship and move on because she, you're just dating her. Versus if you have that exact same woman, take the exact same scenario, you love her, she's great, she's wonderful, and she turns into a total bitch. However, now you are married to her, you live with her, you have two children with her, and you've built a life with her. It is much more difficult for you to end that relationship. It is much more likely, especially if you're a man, and again, I have a, I have almost two decades of experience coaching, counseling, and work with men on this. It is extremely difficult for men to say, she's a total bitch now, she's ruined my life, I'm out of here. It's very hard for men. Women are a little different, women are wired a little differently. But for men, that's hard because they say, what about my kids? I don't wanna get a good girlfriend. I don't wanna get a, or I don't wanna get a new girlfriend. I don't wanna build a new life. Or what about my house? And I don't wanna go through a divorce. And I don't wanna go through that. Because you've married this woman, you're not dating this woman. What my recommendation to you is, and this is how I live, is that you don't marry where you live. You date where you live. I love Dubai. I love it. I am dating Dubai seriously. It is my serious, serious girlfriend. But I'm not gonna marry Dubai. I'm not gonna start a bunch of companies in Dubai doing business in Dubai to people who live in Dubai. I'm not gonna buy a bunch of real estate in Dubai. I'm not gonna set that level of infrastructure in Dubai. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do these things but I'm gonna do it in other countries. Yes, I'm gonna have a corporation or two in Dubai because the taxes are awesome, you should do that. Our get residency in Dubai corporate service is actually available now, you'll link below. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to date Dubai. I'm not going to ever marry Dubai. Too many of you are married to where you live, the United States, Canada, UK, Western Europe, Eastern Europe in some cases, Australia, New Zealand. You say, yeah, there's problems, but I'm gonna stand and fight. Or yeah, there's problems, but what about my family? Yeah, there's problems, but I have a house here. I've gotten these excuses from people I've talked to. I have a house. I've got like 140,000 equity in that house because you've married where you live. And so when someone like me comes along and says, hey, your country's going downhill, you're gonna have some real problems in your life by staying in your country when you could just leave, not just, I realize it's not just leave, but you get my point. You come up with all these excuses because you have married where you live. And if you wanna be stay safe, free and secure, most of the rest of your life, going forward in your life, in the collapsing Western world in which we live, the collapsing dark age in which we live right now, which will go on for at least several more decades. If you wanna do this, you cannot marry where you live. You should date seriously where you live. So that means in my book, Five Flags, your country A, which is the country where you live, that is the country where you live. You spend most of the year there, that means more than six months a year, generally speaking, unless you're a perpetual traveler. You have legal residency in that country. You have a year round lease in that country. You have a place to live and stay and be. You like that country. You enjoy being there at least most of the year. Right now, as I record this, it is August. Uh, August is not a great time to be in Dubai. So that's why I'm here in Guadalajara where it's beautiful. But my point is I spend most of the year in Dubai. And I love being in Dubai. Is Dubai perfect? I'm gonna say this, I always have to throw this out there. Is Dubai perfect? No, no country is. But it's a hell of a lot less bad than just about every other option that I've got. And I have a lot of options. So you instead, that's how, it, that's how it looks, sorry, I'm rambling, but again, this is uh, part of my no editing videos. That's how it looks when you date a country instead of marry a country. If you marry a country, here's what marry a country means. You go there and you, you, you set up uh, all these assets there, you buy a house there, you buy a condo there, you put down real roots, you have like your family there, maybe you marry a woman there, have kids there. I'm not saying you can't do those things if you're not careful you get my point, is when or if that country starts getting worse, if it ever happens, you are much less likely to leave that country and do the things necessary 
than if you're just renting an apartment there. Now, am I saying don't ever buy any real estate? No, real estate's fantastic. Love real estate. I've made a lot of money in real estate throughout my life. Yes, but you don't have to purchase real estate where you live. That would be your country D under the five flags model where you have your investments. If you want real estate, if you want to buy, people say, well, you can't just rent forever. It's wasting money, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no one said rent forever. Here's what you do. You go to your country A, you rent. You go to your country D or countries D, you can have multiple country D, that is where you have your investments and you buy rental real estate there. And you make sure it's a place that respects property rights and all that stuff, you gotta do your due diligence. I'm not saying this is a, a simple process, but you get my point. You buy real estate there, then you get renters there, then once you pay off that real estate, the rent goes to pay off your rent and now you live rent free. The rent from the rental income. You don't, there's no law that says you have to own your own house in order to benefit from not being a renter. You gotta open your mind a little bit and get out of this standard high school logic that a lot of you are using. Does this mean that you can't love where you live? No, you can love your girlfriend, right? You can totally be totally in love with the girlfriend who you are dating and don't live with, can't you? I've done this before, I'm sure you probably have too. That's okay. I love Dubai. I'm not gonna marry Dubai. I love Paraguay. I'm not gonna marry, marry Paraguay. I love Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm not gonna marry Mexico. I'm not gonna marry any country now for the rest of my life. I'm gonna date, seriously, two or three of them. And that way, if there's problems down the road, I am what I've talked about many times, I have mobile. Last thing about this. I have said, I'm on the record about this, I'm gonna double down on this that the two types of people who will survive and thrive in the collapsing Western era which we live, the collapsing civilization, the dark age which we have entered since a few years ago. There are two men who will survive and thrive through this. One type one is those men who are wealthy, that means you have a net worth of at least $10 million or more. If you don't have a net worth of $10 million or more, that means you're number two. And that means men who are, say it with me, hyper flexible. If you're the kind of guy who says no, I'm not moving anywhere, this is my home. I'm gonna stand and fight. I'm gonna vote for Trump or what? family first. My mom lives here, my little brother lives here, F you, or, but I have a house here and this is, my grandpa bought this house, better house for generations. If you're one of those people, nothing wrong with you, I love you. But if you're one of those people, you are not hyper flexible and you will be one of the dead bodies, not literally, I'm talking about figuratively in most cases, you'll be one of the dead bodies over the next few decades who get destroyed by what's coming because you're not flexible. The only way to protect yourself and to live a life of maximum long-term freedom is to date where you live, not marry where you live. And the beauty of that is you can follow my Alpha 2.0 models and you can date, in quotes, multiple countries. So I'll, I'll end with that really quick. Dubai is my home, but Paraguay is also my home. And I love Paraguay almost as much, if not as much as Dubai, but I'm not going to marry Paraguay. I'm not going to marry anybody in terms of countries. That way I'm protected long-term, I'm protected, my finances are protected, my family's protected, and I'm good to go. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions about this, let me know in the comments, or if you want me to talk more about this, I certainly can in future videos. Have fun, bye.